Hey everybody, my name is Gedeki222 and welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Uh, last time we were informed that Mr. McGilded uh, turned up dead after our efforts to defend him in an unsatisfactory trial. And we got a new case um, involving defending our new friend here, Sosuke Natsume. Uh, this time, we are going to go over to Briar Road to take a look at the scene of the crime now that we've gotten kind of information on Sosuke Natsume and his situation. So this is where it happened. Briar Road. Ah! Look, Mr. Narhodo! Look at that regulation metal helmet! It's unmistakable! The men of Scotland Yard are here! They're investigating as we speak! That is their job, you know. But Mr. Narhodo, to see one with my own eyes! They're often depicted in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, but I never dreamt I'd come th this close. To a real Bobby's helmet! What? The, the helmet? <laughs> of course! I have to try one on one day. Well, I hope your Hattie dreams comes true. She's so weird. What's the Japanese delegation doing here? Oh! Inspector Gregson! This isn't on the tourist trail. I'm fairly sure you're well aware. Yes, of course. We're here to investigate. So you've been to the hole in cells then? What'd you make of the criminal? He's not a criminal, as you put it, Inspector. He's a suspect. Hmm. <laughs> we'll see about that. You Japanese like to stick together, I suppose. I'm gonna let that one pass. Well, do what you will. Doesn't bother me. The bloke's in court tomorrow, whatever happens. And the verdict's a foregone conclusion. Ugh. Stone cold air of rejection. Take heart. London at this time of year is full of stone cold air. That makes it worse somehow. What do you got to say, Gregson? Tell me about Scotland Yard, Inspector. Ever since I read about it in the Adventure of Herlock Sholmes, I've been fascinated by the place. The Yard is the most sophisticated police and organization you'll find anywhere in the world, man. Oh, and you know, I've always dreamt of wearing a real Bobby's helmet. It does make them look the part, seeing that policeman there with his helmet on. You certainly get the sense that this is a man who will take no nonsense in his duty protecting the city. Oh, yes! Doesn't he look wonderful? Being a London Bobby is hard going, I can tell you. Oh, really? First thing in the morning, you know what he does? Goes around and rouses all the um, laborers on his beat so they can get off to work. What? He wakes people up? Yep. Wraps on their windows with a long pole. Did it myself going back a bit. I had no idea. The Bobby works for the people of the town. It's just another one of his duties. After that, he starts tirelessly patrolling the streets all day long. He has to cover 20 miles a day. That's the regulation distance. I can't really imagine how far that is, but it sounds like a long way. Oh yeah, because they wouldn't use miles. Why do you use miles? Let me see. 20 miles is approximately the distance from Tokyo to Yokohama. On foot? That's that's definitely taking things a step too far. And when it gets dark, of course, he has the important job of lighting all the gas street lamps. Oh my. I suppose in between all those duties, Bobbers are expected to investigate cases as well. And chase after criminals trying to evade the law. I'm not sure you could call it in between exactly. More alongside, but yes. Oh, okay, now you're just arguing semantics. They're expected to handle those jobs as well. We do have men kneeling over from time to time, I admit. Or keeling over. 
Always dreamt of wearing one of those helmets, as I said. But it's with a heavy heart that I shall have to relinquish that dream to you, Mr. Narahodo. Your heavy heart will be my heavy head if you do. Okay. It happened at around five in the evening, two days ago, just there on that open bit of pavement. The victim, a young woman, was stabbed with a blade from behind. Is it right that that lady is still unconscious now? You mentioned she is being treated in a hospital. I never said she was a lady. Truth is, unless she comes around pretty smartish, we won't be able to find out much about her at all. Suppose that means they haven't been able to take a statement from her, of course. Here's a map of the local area I happen to have on me. You can take it if you want. Really? Are you sure? It's yard policy to give lawyers defendant suspects the odd bit of information to go on. I haven't actually accepted the job yet, but still. Thank you, Inspector. We gratefully accept. The local map has been entered into the court record. Street map of the local area showing where the victim was found. Anyway. As far as we know, there was no one else on the scene other than the victim and your fellow countrymen. So who did it, do you think? Not much of a head-scratcher, is it? Well, I know Mr. Natsume is also claiming not to have seen anyone around, but... But just because he didn't see anyone... It doesn't mean we can't be sure that nobody else was present. I'm sorry to have to tell you, but we most certainly can be sure. How? Because, ma'am, the precise moment of the stabbing didn't go unnoticed. It... what? We have two very reliable witnesses, no less. Ah! It was a typical foggy London day, and your client obviously didn't see them. There were witnesses now? Want to hear about these witnesses. Who are these witnesses, Inspector? A fellow and his wife. And the man's one of the most reliable and respected citizens in all of London. He's a copper from Scotland Yard. Ah! Uh, a policeman? That might change things. And this policeman just happened to be there the exact moment the woman was attacked? Nothing peculiar about that, ma'am. Part and parcel of being a bobby. Catching them banging in the act and all that. Um, do you think it might be possible for us to ask the policeman a few questions? Be my guest. You can ask him what you like in court tomorrow. Oh. I have no doubt it'll be summoned as a witness. So that'll give you something to look forward to. That's that then. He's got no intention of letting us meet the man beforehand, it seems. A policeman witnessed the incident. And your judicial assistant... I must warn you that this could make our job very difficult indeed. Yes, as a non-judicial assistant, I could have warned me of that too. Oh yes, one more thing, Inspector. What? The person who led you to the suspect. I hear that was Mr. Herlock Sholmes. What are you bringing him up for? Was it something I said? Color is drained from his cheeks. Who did you hear that name from? Oh, well, um, it was Mr. Natsume who mentioned it. He said that Mr. Sholmes was with the police when they entered his lodgings. I'm sure it was the result of Mr. Sholmes' inspirational great deductions. Fiddle faddle! Ugh! That man's an amateur, and I'm getting sick and tired of him showing his mug everywhere. Oh. I don't know where he gets his information from, but he turns up at the scene of the crime wanders around spouting incomprehensible rubbish, and before you know it, he claimed to have solved the case. Yes, he's quite astounding, isn't he? He... he is a great help to Scotland Yard, though, isn't he? Gibble gabble! Ugh. Ever seen this before? Oh, yes, that's France Magazine. A wonderful publication in which the adventure of Herlock Sholmes appears. Yes, well, that wonderful publication, as you put it, sees fit to include several of the art detectives in its stories. And that so-called great detective makes a mockery of all of us. If you ask anyone at the yard, it's a misadventure to be included in any of Herlock Sholmes' tale at all. 
Well, I suppose there is an element of that. We work our socks off, every one of us, only to be frumped by the public thanks to an obnoxious detective. The man's as dangerous to us as Scotland Yard as he is to all of our criminals. That can't really be true, can it, Inspector? Clearly the great detective and the police have a complex relationship. The twitchy Japanese bloke goes on trial tomorrow. Are you going to defend him or not? Well, um... Makes no difference to me, but I will just say this. No London lawyer worth his salt would touch that case with a barge pole. Because the prosecution is being handled by the Reaper of the Bailey, you mean? There's no way to save that man now. It's a waste of time trying. It is all a bit strange, though. Sorry? The Reaper. He hasn't appeared in court once for a good few years now. Yes, we did hear something to that effect. And the only people he bothers with are the real scum. The master criminals. The violent ones. Master criminals? The, the violent ones? That's right. He handpicks his victims, only deals with those guaranteed to go to the gallows for their sins. But, Mr. Natsume wouldn't hang for what he's accused of, surely? That's just my point, Sunshine. Yes, the young woman was stabbed, but I didn't kill her. Couldn't even say the incident intent was there. So this isn't the sort of case I'd be expecting the Reaper to want to sink his teeth into, for want of a better phrase. Well, it's not exactly a minor fraction, is it? No, there's got to be more to it. Some reason he's taken an interest. Really? What sort of reason, Inspector? You think I can tell what's going on inside the head of the Lord of Darkness? You have to ask him yourself at tomorrow's trial. Are we really going to have to face the Reaper again? The Lord of Darkness, as he puts it? Well... I don't think we're going to get any more useful information out of the detective. Mr. Naruhodo, can I make a suggestion? Oh, yes, what is it? Well, it seems to me that we must speak with him about this. By him, do you mean Mr. Sholmes? Yes, Mr. Herlock Sholmes, exactly! Look at those shining eyes. You can't wait, can you? Well, Mr. Natsume did blame Mr. Sholmes for all this, didn't he? Yes, he did. He really did. Which makes him an involved party in the case. Are you going to ignore that? I hope not. I assure you, it's not simply my selfish desire to meet Mr. Sholmes again. The trouble is, we have no idea of the man's address even. It's, how it's Baker Street. How do you know that? It's in the stories, of course. 221B Baker Street. The most famous address in the world. Oh, I see. Well, there's nothing to stop us from going, I suppose. We better find a way there before Suzette son gets any more excited and unpredictable. Hoorah! I'll summon a carriage! So we're going to have a reunion already with the great detective, Mr. Herlock Sholmes. I just want to double check to make sure. It doesn't really look like there's anything here, if I'm being honest with you. So, can we just go? Okay. Thank you very much. It's just up there overlooking the street. Good day. Thanks again. This is it. The residence of Mr. Herlock Scholz.
So this is where the great detective makes his living. It feels surreal to be here somehow. Oh no. Is it as described in the stories, Miss Suzato? Um, Suzato-san? Many, many famous cases have been solved here in this very room. Oh, I, I suppose they must have been, yes. I've never read the story, so it's hard to get quite as excited about it as she seems to be. The detective chases the villain relentlessly as he disappears into the fog down an unlit London street. Oh, the thrill of it! The romanticism! Can't you feel your heart thumping in your chest? Can't you, Mr. Donahodo? Oh, I... I suppose I can, yes. So, if you don't mind... I'll just stand here and soak up the atmosphere for a while longer. Please, don't mind me. Ah... She's obsessed. Well, looks like our detective friend isn't home at present. Excuse me, is anybody home? Oh, do we have a visitor? Oh, hey, it's you. Hello. Is it a big new case for Mr. Sholmes? Um, hello. Wait. Aren't you... Oh, how rude of me. I'll go and make some tea at once. I'm sure it's the same girl. Mrs. Sato, did you see the girl who was just here? Oh, yes. Isn't it truly extraordinary? To think that the King of Bohemia came to this very room to ask Mr. Sholmes to take on his case. The, the King of Bohemia? King Wilhelm Goderich Sigmund von Ormstein, of course. Sorry, I'm drawing a blank. Forget the adventure of Herlock Sholmes for a moment, and look over there. The tea's brewed, and I have a freshly baked cake as well. Ah, it's you! I knew it. Zedison recognizes her too. Ah, ah there you there are! You are. And taking, and taking that with that you, with as, you well. as well. I was looking, I was looking forward, forward to the trial run of my experimental, experimental smoke, smoke grenade, grenade launcher. launcher. Oh, oh, good day, good to, day you. to you. I'm, I'm well, well, the inventor, the inventor I, suppose, I suppose, of that machine. Of that machine. Oh. It's the girl who turned up at the end of Mr. McGilda's trial in the defendant's antechamber. I've never met a lawyer from the Far East before. Poor you, having to get straight to work when you've only just arrived in London. Oh, yes, it was challenging. Well, tr try this tea. It's my special blend, you know. Oh, um, thank you. Is tea supposed to look that color? Oh my, what a fragrant yet mellow flavor. Hooray, it's a winner. I tried blending different leaves designed to alleviate fatigue, you see. You must be exhausted after your long voyage here. And you have another ticklish trial tomorrow. Oh, and you're to defend a Japanese man. I do wish you lots and lots of luck. Um... Did Mrs. Sholmes tell you about us by any chance? Oh! You know Hurley, do you? Hurley? Mrs. Sholmes to you, surely? Mrs. Sholmes was a fellow passenger on the boat that brought, brought us to Great Britain, you see. Was he really? Well, I had no idea. I'm afraid Hurley's on an errand again today. Even though he's just returned from overseas. Wait a minute. We met this girl for the first time ever yesterday after the trial, and only briefly at that. How on earth does she know so much about us? Did she deduce all those things, do you think? And perhaps more to the point, why is she here in Mr. Shum's suite? Oh, silly me. I haven't introduced myself, have I? It is a great pleasure to meet you both. My name is Iris Wilson. I live here together with Hurley. Ah, Iris, is it? What a lovely name. What? What's the matter? No, wait, this, this can't be. D did you, did you say that your, your name is Wilson? What's the matter with Suzato-san? Why is she so flustered all of a sudden? 
Yes, that's right. And what are your names? Oh, um, I'm Ryunosuke Narahodo, a lawyer from Japan. Oh, sorry. I'm Mr. Narahodo's judicial assistant, Suzato Mikotoba. It's wonderful to meet you. Lovely. Susie and Runo. Got it. Susie and Runo? There's more to this girl than meets the eye. I have so many questions for her, I don't know where to start. Yes, and so do I. All right, more conversations. It was you that we ran to yesterday, wasn't it? At the old Bailey? Yes, that's right. You were ever so helpful. Thank you so much. Oh no, not at all. I'm sorry we couldn't have been more welcoming. Though at the time, we did have a rather large gun pointed at us. Like this? Ah, thinking back now. You left with Miss Lestrade in tow, didn't you? Oh yes, that awkward witness, Gina Lestrade. Oh, Guinea? Yes, she's a professional pickpocket. So we found out. It was very naughty of her to pinch my invention like that. Are you referring to that trial disrupting gun like contraption? Exactly! So I followed her, you see, to get it back. Hmm, perhaps I should think about fitting a self destruct mechanism in my inventions. This girl is dangerous. Anyway, I brought Ginny back here after that so she could apologize to my trusty technician. Sorry, your technician? Hurley, of course, silly. Hurley? Yes, Herlock. Herlock Sholmes. We live here together. I, I had no idea the great detective had such an interesting young daughter. Daughter? Not likely. What? I wouldn't call him Hurley if he was my father, would I? Well then, what is your relationship with Mr. Sholmes? Well, I expect you're found at the lodgings of any kind of London are very expensive. So the solution is to share the cost with a partner, a roommate. Your roommates? I hope you don't mind me asking, Iris, but how old are you? Ten at last this year. Well, what of your mother and father? Oh no, they're not around. Oh, I see. Wonder what the story is there. I imagine we're going to find out later. Oh yes, there's something I must ask you. Of course, of course, go ahead, Susie. I'm a very great fan of the Adventure of Herlock Sholmes and, oh, you have a copy of Rance Magazine. Yes, I read every issue. It's delivered all the way to Japan on a ship. Oh, this is so exciting. My stories are being read on the other side of the world. My stories? That's right. Hurley is always solving such amazing cases, you see, and he tells me all about them. They really are quite fascinating. It would be such a shame if I was the only one who ever heard them, don't you think? Goodness! Last night, he was telling me all about a new case he just solved on a steamship traveling from a faraway land. So I was just in the middle of typing up the manuscript for the next issue before you came. So you... you are the author. Yes, I'll let you in on a secret if you like. I'm going to call this latest adventure The Speckled Band. The Speckled Band? That's certainly very familiar. Of course, I've always changed one or two details in the stories here and there. This time, I had the idea of making a venomous snake be the cause of all the trouble. Oh, that was Mr. Sholmes' first thought as well, actually. Yes, and of course I know that a snake might not be a credible fit for the facts of the case exactly, but... It's a story! Some poetic license is justified to make it more thrilling, I think, don't you? So, do you mean to say... Are the stories from Mr. Sholmes that are published in Rance Magazine... All written by me? Yes, only my wonderful and very modern typewriter. But, 
But all the stories I've ever read are written by a doctor of medicine, Dr. John H. Wilson. This other son's getting more and more worked out. Ah, uh, yes. That's me. I mean, my name really is Wilson. But what about the doctor of medicine part? That's all true, too. I am a doctor of medicine. No! At 10 years old? At 10 years old. Well, that's quite incredible. But, but, but... Stop making this woman cry! <laughs> Dr. Wilson is an English gentleman. Ah, uh, yes. I did alter the setting slightly for the stories to be more compelling. Oh! Well, it sounds a little strange, doesn't it? A great detective with a 10-year-old girl in tow? I suppose it does, yes. Poor susato san She looks like her whole world is just falling apart. Stop making this woman suffer. Um, about before... Yes, yes? What's in your mind, Runo? Do tell me. How did you know that I was just a lawyer and we just arrived in London, I mean? Yes. Oh, and that we have a difficult trial tomorrow. How did you know all that? Oh, that's what you mean. Please, tell us how you did it. Explain every detail. Of course, I'd be delighted. Although, there's really no mystery. Now, let's begin. Our explosive is proud to present her logic and reasoning spectacular. Oh God, not again. First of all, I know already that you were a lawyer, Runo. After all, I met you yesterday at the Old Bailey in the defendant's antechamber. But you also said that we'd only just arrived in London. How did you know that? I observed a passport and travel ticket protruding from your breast pocket. Oh. So I was reasonably confident that you must have only just arrived in the country. And on top of that... You accepted a case against that particular prosecutor, telling me you were unaware of London's court affairs. The Reaper of the Bailey? I walked right into that one, didn't I? Then I noticed the red ink stamp on the back of Susie's hand. You were given that when you visited a lo local prison to meet with a suspect, weren't you, earlier today? Ah! They used those stamps to keep a close eye on comings and goings, you see. I, I didn't realize. And a red stamp is only used for people visiting foreign inmates. So, that told me that even though you only yesterday concluded the trial of Madness McGill did, the two of you had already had cause to visit a foreign inmate at a local prison. However, neither of you was wearing a particularly sad expression on your face. So I concluded that the prisoner was unlikely to be a friend or relative. That led me to believe that you must have accepted a new case. I... I see. But how could you have known that the trial's tomorrow? Well, having barely been home for a few hours yesterday, Hurley solved yet another case. It obviously amused him. He told me that he had caught a Japanese man who was bawling and trembling. A Japanese man? Well, clearly that must have been... Mr. Natsume. Now, Runo has that fancy Japanese sword. And I think your outfit is called a kimono, isn't it, Susie? Well, anyway, it's clear to me that you both come from Japan yourselves. So I put two and two together and decided you must be defending the Japanese man Hurley caught. And there was only one conclusion those facts could lead me to. You both came here to ask Hurley about the case. That was actually a flawless deduction. <laughs> Holy c there's a note on the mantelpiece that says the man's trial will be tomorrow. Hurley is always stabbing his nose with a knife, you know. He is silly. And that's all there was to it, really. Thank you for listening. I'm Iris Wilson, and that was one of my great deductions.
Well, was it a winner? Were my deductions correct? They... they were spot on. That was amazing, Iris. Truly a great deduction. You even managed this, the certain something of Mr. Shum's delivery. Oh, well, I was just copying Hurley's style for that. This is really very good news. You could tell us all about the case involving the Japanese man. You will, won't you, Iris? Please? Please tell me. So yesterday, Mr. Shulm's apprehended a Japanese man, you were saying. Yes. Hurley had just arrived back in London after his sea voyage. But the police were waiting for him at the railway station to take him directly to the crime scene. Ah, the great detective is a popular man, it seems. Apparently, a woman was stabbed on a quiet street somewhere in town. There are witnesses who had seen a short, shifty-looking, stooped man running away from the scene. A short, shifty-looking, stooped man. Mr. Natsu may be on any doubt. Sasuke-san said that he didn't see anybody else on the street at all. But it seems there were witnesses after all. Hurley used his great deductive power to determine the man's address. There was a lodging room very nearby. He went directly there with the police, and what did they find? In short, shifty-looking, stooped man shivering in fear. Ugh, Mr. Shum's great deduction certainly hit the mark that time. Of course it did. He's a great detective. Still, that means the incident occurred only two days ago. Surely tomorrow is too soon for the trial, isn't it? Definitely. We have no time to investigate properly. Hurley says that London is rife with crime. Oh, Scotland Yard is doing its best, but they can't stay on top of it, apparently. Oh dear, I hadn't realized the situation was so dire. That's why they can't afford to spend too much time investigating cases and trying the criminals in court. Staff and money are both short. Crimes are usually pinned on the first suspicious person. That's terrible! I suppose it's the harsh reality of the workings of the world's greatest justice system. I, I suppose it is, but in that case... I don't hold out much hope for Sosuke-san. Thank you for answering so many of our questions, Iris. That has been very informative. Oh, you're most welcome. I've had so much fun! Do you happen to know where Mr. Sholmes is at the moment? As you guessed, we'd like to ask him some questions about this case as well. Ah, uh, well... I sense Hurley is still investigating the scene. Of the case involving Mr. Natsume, you mean? Yes, Mr. Natsume. Hurley said he was going to the man's lodgings. If you leave now, you'll probably catch him there. Iris, do you know where those lodgings are? Well, I imagine the police are still investigating the scene of the crime themselves, aren't they? Did you happen to come across a detective by the name of Gregson when you were there? Yes, we know Inspector Gregson. Ah, goody. In that case... Give Gregson this for me, would you? If you do that, I'm sure he'll tell you what you want to know. What is this? A five shilling piece and a postcard, it seems. I suppose card has been entered into the court record. It reads, Tell the gentleman in black whatever he wants to know. I trust that won't be a problem. Gosh! This will make the inspector help us, will it? Well, thank you, Iris. We'll give it a try. Good luck, then. I'm going to return to writing my manuscript, The Speckled Band. And I'll be making more special blends of tea. So come back again soon. We'd be delighted. Thank you so much, Iris. Well, Mr. Anahodo, it's back to the scene of the crime. So, somewhat dubious that they would exert any influence over the man of Scotland Yard at all. We headed back to the scene with Iris' curious note and one of the world's heaviest silver coins in our hand. <laughs> 